Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with lesson number 15 in our new Arduino tutorial series where we are learning how to build an inertial measurement unit. What we are going to do today is we are going to continue to learn a little bit more about Visual Python. Before we jump in and actually do our final modeling, which is uh, basically the end of this series of lessons, what we want to have is we want to have a Visual Python simulation that will track our IMU project in real time no matter how we orient it, our visualization will keep track of it. Now, in the last couple of lessons, we learned how to install Visual Python, then create some static objects. In the last lesson, we learned how to start creating motion in an object. And then your homework from last week was to make a box with a marble bouncing around in the box. And what the assignment was, was to create something that did this. Okay, where you have marbles in a box. Okay, and you see the marbles moving around in straight lines, kind of like a gas particle in a room bouncing off of the walls. And you're not able to see that, are you? Let me go to a more suitable view. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so this is what your assignment was. Your assignment was to create a box and have marbles bouncing around off the walls. Who was able to accomplish this lesson? I'm going to show you how to do it today, but you had enough information to do this on your own from the earlier two lessons. If anybody was able to do the lesson before watching this one and do it successfully, leave me a comment down below saying, I am legend. Okay, I am legend. So let's go ahead and pour yourself a nice big mug of iced coffee. Let's call up, let's call up the Python, or Python, I guess. We'll get the IDLE, our uh, development environment. <clears throat> Call up a nice window. That's the shell that opens. So I will need to do a file, new file. Okay. And then here I have got a nice window. And I'm going to just make this full size. Okay. I'm going to make this full size so that you guys can see. And I think this is the window that you need to look at right here. Ah, I've got another window encroaching. Okay. All right, I believe that looks pretty good. Okay, if we are going to do this animation, what is the first thing that we need to do? We need to import vPython. So we are going to say from vPython import star, which is say the whole enchilada. Okay, it means import everything from vPython. Now, if we're going to do that simulation, the first thing that we need to do is build our box. And so I like to kind of be logical in, what, what, in how I name things, so I'm going to need a left wall, a right wall, a top wall, a bottom wall, a front wall, and a back wall. And so one of the purposes of this is to kind of get your mind in there working with the dimensions and working with the parameters in vPython. So let's make our left wall. Okay, our left wall is going to be a what? It's going to be a box. And then what am I going to have? I'm going to have a position of the box and that position is going to be a vector okay and so this is left okay this is going to be left well this direction in vpython is x right this is positive x and so left my left would be in the negative x direction so i'm going to put this in a position of minus five in the x zero in the y zero in the z and so this is going to be a wall and instead of being at the origin, it's going to be five units to the left, okay? I need a dimension. Well, walls are thin, so I'm going to make the length. The length is the dimension in the x-axis, okay? So if I am moving this along the x-axis, and this is my left wall, in the x-dimension, it's very thin, okay? So the length 
is along the x-axis, the length is along the x-axis, so that is going to be equal to 0.1, very small, and then how wide, y is in the z direction, well let's make it 10, so width is equal to 10, okay, so width is 10, and then we need to have height, and so it'll be a square wall, so we'll make it height, height, height is equal to 10. Does that make sense? Let's make it color equal color dot white. Okay. And then let's make the opacity equal to, oh, let's say 0.4. I believe that will work pretty well if I'm not, eh, let's make it 0.2. Okay. Let's make the opacity 0.2 because the action's happening in the box. All right, I'm going to go ahead and run this and just see if I get one wall because I'm going to be copying and pasting this six more times. So let's make sure that it actually is going to work before we copy and mistake errors, copy and paste errors. Okay, wants me to save it, and so I will just call it my box. Okay. That is an unexpected result, a very unexpected result. What did I do wrong here? See, errors, errors, errors already. Okay, left is equal to box, position is minus 5, that's good. Length is equal to 0.1, width is, uh, height is H-E-I-G-H-T, it's height, not height. Okay. Let's hope we have a little more luck this time. But you see, this is why you run it as you go. So you don't, you know, you made one mistake and you don't have 50 mistakes in there. Okay. Can you guys see that? It is a tall, thin wall that is five units to the left. Okay, man, we are gonna we are really on a roll here. So let's get this line of code. Okay, let's do a control C to copy it. Let's go to the next line and paste it. Only this time it is going to be instead of left. The easiest one to do from this would be right. Okay, and here instead of being, it's going to be the same length, width, and height, but instead of being minus 5, it is going to be what? Plus 5. So then I'm going to have the left and the right. And I'm not even going to check that because I'm pretty confident it's going to work. So now on this one, we're going to have to think, right? On this one, we're going to have to think. So left, right, let's do top. Okay. Part of the exercise here is understanding the orientation in vPython. So x goes this way. And remember, they do the kind of doofus thing where y is up. So if I want top, the position vector has to go to what? 5, because it's going to be up from the origin. Now we've got to think about length and width, right? Because the, the z direction is the direction of height. And so that top wall needs to be thin. So the height would be the one that is going to be 0.1 this time. Width is 10 and length will be 10. Okay. And if we do that, then the bottom one from that should be easy. So let's do a control C and a control V. And now let's do bottom. And the bottom would be instead of plus five, it's going to be the same wall, but we're going to move it down. Ooh, and I did not do this right, that the top would not be in the position. It would be zero. Five because right we made it like this now we got to move it five up on the top well what would the bottom be it would be down five okay so this would be minus five I think this is going to work so let's go ahead and do the run module and let's see what happens boom look at that I have the top I have the left, I have the right, and I failed miserably on the bottom. Let's see what we did wrong on the bottom. Okay, so, ooh, I still had it in that position. Okay, zero. So I want to move it down. When I put minus 5 in X, I moved it over. So this is going to be 
bottom is going to be minus 5. I'll run it, but I'm confident that it is going to work. All right. All right, we're getting our box built. Do you see that? Now we need a back wall and we need a front wall. All right, so I'm going to paste what I had before, Control V. I have left, right, ah, I have left, I have right, I have top, I have bottom. So now let's do a back. And the back this way is which axis? It's the Z axis. So back would be minus 5 because right right hand rule x y z would come towards me positive z would be this direction negative z would be that direction so this would be 0 0 minus 5 and the z is the width along z is what they call width and so in this case my width needs to be 0.1 and my height needs to be 10 okay and I'm pretty confident that that's going to work and so I'm just going to take that and I'm going to copy that and then paste it and now instead of being back 5 and Z it needs to be forward 5 and Z and I really think this is going to be a six-sided box let's run it Boom! Look at that. We have a perfect six-sided box. Okay, do you see what this is making you think is? It's making you think that x along x is the dimension that they call length. Along z is the dimension that they call width. And along y is the dimension that they call height. So we're kind of getting oriented with their <clears throat> reference frame in vPython. And that'll make it a lot easier to continue developing our program. OK, so we've got our box built. I would say that that is a pretty important accomplishment. Man, I've got so many of these windows. I've got to close some of these. Uh, Python windows out okay because it is more than I can keep track of how did I get back to that one okay I don't know let's kill this okay so here we go I'm getting these things killed so that I can keep track of where I am Okay, and the problem is it just keeps opening them every time I do something. So this is the one that we are working on, right? So we had uh, we had left, right, top, bottom, and then back, and this should have been front, okay, like that. And let me see here. I think that's where I had my mistake. I've got two of these. Okay, I think this will work this time. I need. I didn't change the front back thing. Okay, there we go. Maybe I didn't have a front on it last time, but now it is working. So I will come back over here, and I will go back to my program. Okay, so now we have our box. That's good, right? It's good that we have our box. And what do we want to do after we get our box? What we want to do after we get our box, man, I'm having trouble with my view over here. What we want to do, so we've got left, right, back, front, bottom, top. Okay, we've got all those things. Now what we want is we want the marble. Okay, and so ball is a little simpler than marble, so I'll call it a ball. Ball is equal to sphere, S-P-H-E-R-E, -E. and then let's make the radius equal to 0.5. Okay, and then let's uh, let's make the color equal color dot red. Okay, so now I should have a ball. It will be sitting just in the center of our animation, but let's check it real, real quickly here. It should just be a little red ball sitting in the middle of the animation. 
that looks good. Okay, so we've got kind of a static image that we created now. Now let's go about animating this thing. And I'm really curious if you guys were able to animate this thing. Well, what you are doing if you're animating it, you're moving it. You are changing the position. So let's just create a variable x position. Okay, and let's just put it at zero. Okay, y position equals zero. Z position equals zero. That would start it. Those would set it up to start it at the center of the box. But actually, I don't want it to just go and end up in something where it's just going back and forth. So I kind of want to shake it up a little bit. Let's say 1 and minus 2. So we're a little bit more starting in a random position. So part of it is where am I? Okay, and then part of it is I have to change that position. Now, one thing I could just say is x pos equals x pos plus 0.1, and it would just keep going. But what would happen? It would get to the edge of the box and it would keep going. It would escape the box and it would just go out to, you know, the edge of the universe. So, what I want to do is when I hit a wall, I want to cha change the direction of the marble. So then this kind of direction thing in this this change, I'm going to have this concept of x change and that's the change in each step in the x position and I'm going to call that point 1. Okay? Then I'm going to have y change and that's equal to point 1. And then I'm going to have z change and that is going to be equal to point 1. So that's just the increment. Now why do I have three different increments on uh, x change, y change, z change? Why don't I just say change is point 0.1? Because sometimes you're going in the positive x direction and while you're going in the positive x direction you're going in the negative y direction. So sometimes x change might be positive and y change might be negative. So each one is kind of moving in x, y, and z on its own and so I need to have those three variables. All right. So I think that looks pretty good. So I believe now we're ready to animate this thing. So we're going to need a loop that loops forever. So we'll just make it a while loop while true and that needs to have an uppercase T while true ah, while true okay and semicolon so what do we want to have happen well anytime you're going to animate something you have to have a rate statement we'll put in a rate of 40 that means I think it's probably trying to update 40 times a second now what are we updating we're updating the ball position okay so ball dot position is equal to a what? It's equal to a vector. I'm getting better, better about remembering vector. And where do I want to put it? Well, I want to put it at x position. I want to put it at y position. And I want to put it at z position. Okay? And so that's where the position is going to be. Okay? Let's just run this for fun just to see what's going to happen. It's going to be moving in the x direction. And what's it going to do? Tell me what it's going to do. Okay, when I run this, what's it going to do? It's going to do absolutely nothing because I had an error. What did I do wrong? Let me go back and look at the shell, if I can find the shell. Ah, shell looks happy. Why did this not animate? Okay, we'll come back to our program and we will figure out why this thing did not animate. This is an old program that we are going to kill. Remember, that was the one from last week. Okay. So what happened here? Ball position is equal to vector. X position, Y position, Z position. Ah, I see. It's just not changing X position, Y position, and Z position. It is not changing. It is just saying there. So what I need to say is X position equals X, X position plus what? X change. Okay. Y position is equal to Y position plus Y change. And then Z position is equal to Z position plus Z change. Does that make sense? Okay, now tell me what's going to happen. It's going to move this time, but what's it going to do? What is it going to do?
Okay, look at that. It's moving, but what happened? It escaped the box, and now it is on its way to infinity. It is just going, and you see the box being left in the background. So that is not good. And so we need to kill that. Okay, we need to kill that. All right, and now we need to go back to our code. Okay, we need to go back to our code. And so what happens when we get to the edge of the box, what do we need to do? Change direction. Well, which one? Well, if I'm getting to the edge, the X edge of the box, I need to change the X direction. If I get to the left, if I'm going negative and I get to the left X edge, I need to make X change positive. So if I'm coming this way, hit the wall, make X change negative, and it will come back this way. And then when I hit this one, make X change positive, and it will come back this way. If I'm coming up here, hit the roof, I need to make Y change negative. And when I get down here, I need to make X change, uh, Y change positive hit here, Z change, make ne make positive, and hit here, Z change, make negative. So you see, I've got to change the sign of X change, Y change, and Z change when I hit those walls. Okay, so how would I do that? Well, I would make an if statement, and I need to turn this thing off. I hope you guys have not been annoyed because that has been behind there. Okay, hopefully it wasn't too much that you didn't see that I was typing. Okay, so now what do we need to do? Well, if our x position is greater than or equal to 5, that means I've gotten all the way out to 5. If that is true, remember with an if statement, you put a colon at the end of it. If that is true, what do I want? Well, I want x change to become equal to negative 0.1. Okay, and similarly, if x position hits like the negative side, so if it becomes less than or equal to negative 5, does that make sense? Negative 5, because I'm going this direction now, I've hit negative 5. What do I want to do in that case? In that case, x change is going to be equal to positive 0.1. Hope that makes sense. All right, these next ones for Y and Z are going to be very similar. So I am simply going to copy this. And then with a little luck, we can paste them. All right, and so this time, instead of X, we are going to do Y and Y and Y and Y. Similarly, Z should be very similar. So we're going to copy it or we're going to paste it. And so Z position, Z position, Z position, Z position. Does this make sense? Let's try running this thing now. Wow, look at that, huh? Man, we got this thing done with just a few lines of code, but I do seem to be escaping out the top of the box. Okay, let's slow this down. Let's see if we can slow this thing down. We will bring our code view back up, and this is this one. Okay, let's slow this thing down to like 10, because it looks like it's escaping the box. Okay, watch this as it hits the edge. Watch what happens. Do you see how it's coming halfway out and then turning around? Why? Because position is measured between the origin and the center of the sphere. So I am taking the center of the sphere to the center of the wall and then turning around. Well, if the center of the sphere is at the center of the wall, half the sphere is past it, okay? So this was a really good first thing, but we've got to start thinking. We've got to start thinking, and we've got to get better precision in this because a marble doesn't go halfway through a wall when it bounces off, when the edge of the marble hits the edge of the wall. So we are going to need to do some adjustments. 
so really what you got to think of is you have to think of you don't want the center of the marble to go all the way to five because then it'll be in the middle of the wall so you need to first of all think that if I'm thinking about the edge of the marble I've got to stop at half the thickness of the marble half the thickness of the marble which is the radius of the marble and so if we go back here and look at the radius as 0.5 we need to subtract minus 0.5 okay so that way the marble will not come and match with the center of the wall that way the marble will come and the edge of the marble now is where it's in the center of the wall so the edge of the marble is still going in the center of the wall so I got to stop a little bit sooner to take into account the thickness of the wall and between the center of the wall and the edge of the wall is half the thickness of the wall well what was the thickness of the wall the thickness of the wall was 0.1 so besides the 0.5 for the radius of the marble we've got to also subtract half of the thickness of the wall which would be 0 0.05 all right and now this would also be true for all of these positive value ones on y we want to stop a little bit earlier and on z we want to stop a little bit earlier now on the minus 5 it's going to go the other way okay on the minus 5 we have to stop closer to zero which means instead of subtracting minus 0.5 and minus 0.05 we want to add them <coughs> plus 0.5 plus 0.05 okay and now we need to adjust the other ones besides just x we need to adjust y okay and we need to adjust z okay let's try running this that was a mistake run run module all right here we go okay let's look oh man look at that it is not coming out I'm trying to get it where we can see it right as it goes down boom just kisses the edge of that box and it doesn't pop out look at that it doesn't even go into it absolutely perfect uh, absolutely perfect okay this has been kind of a fun one what your homework assignment is go in and put more marbles in there but don't put red green and blue marbles that are just tracking each other you want to kind of start them in random positions and you want to kind of start them in random direction like maybe you have x positive and y negative they should all be moving at the same rate so the magnitude of the change needs to be the same <clears throat> but kind of make a little simulation of imagining that these were gas particles and have them go around and it'll look pretty cool if you will start them at different positions and if you will start them in different directions but the magnitude of x change y change and z change should be the same but you're gonna if you have different marbles you're not gonna just have to have new balls you're gonna also have to have new uh, position variables and you're gonna have to have new change variables because you can't use the same change variables for two marbles or four marbles because each marble is moving independently okay guys this has been a pretty fun lesson or at least I've enjoyed it I hope you've enjoyed it too so I need you to do your homework <clears throat> and then in the next lesson what we're gonna do is so far we have just taken an object and we have moved it around okay like this in the ball we're just moving it around all right we've also changed the size of things dynamically and we've moved things dynamically but if you think about what our overall end goal is let me get this back over here so that you can see it and I believe it is uh, where are we it is this one okay so if you remember what we are trying to do here we're not moving the thing what we're doing is rotating it and that's the one thing that we haven't done yet we've changed the size and we've moved things 
but what we want to do is rotate it. And so in the next two or three lessons, we're going to start getting our head around how you rotate things in three dimensions because we've got to know how to do that. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the rotation based on data that we make, kind of like with our for loops or maybe inputting a, uh, a number to see how to orient it. But we've got to get our head around these orientations where we're changing how we are oriented. We've got to change the direction that we are pointing. we get, got to get our heads around that. And so the next two or three lessons will be that. And then when we understand those orientations, then we can come back to our visual model of our breadboard, which you should already have, and then we can bring that to life. Okay, Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com. You guys leave your comments down below. Let me know, is anybody following these lessons? Is anybody paying attention? Is anybody actually learning this stuff? Also, think about giving us a thumbs up. Think about sharing this video, sharing this series of lessons with other people. Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.